fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue with white, official weight, 141 pounds. His professional record, 48 victories, including 31 knockouts, 10 defeats, one draw, originally from Ciudad de Mexico, now fighting out of El Paso, Texas, the former lightweight champion of the world, Cesar Bazan. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with silver, official weight 142 pounds, a perfect professional record consisting of 21 bouts, 21 victories including 14 knockouts from Thornton, Colorado, the undefeated Mike Alvarado. Okay, trunks here are good. Trunks here are good. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to remind you I want a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Acuérdense. Quiero una pelea limpia. Dios los bendigas. Token want this. Touch up. Alvarado's a prospect at junior welterweight, though he's really more of a welterweight. A deep yet wide open division without a dominant champion in light of Ricky Hatton's recent performances. Bazan is really shop worn. Let's see what we have here in Alvarado. Bazan, in his lengthy career, has been in the ring with fighters like Stevie Johnston, Jose Luis Castillo, and, most noteworthily, Miguel Cotto, who tattooed him for 377 landed punches over the course of 10 rounds. But that kind of experience makes him a useful gatekeeper for a fighter like Alvarado. And he still has a fair amount of his skills left, too. He's not which is a really completely shot one fighter. But even Bazan acknowledged to us in his fighter meeting yesterday that he would have to be careful of not getting discouraged in the early rounds, that he's going to have to show himself something in the first three or four rounds to get the kind of commitment and resolution necessary to keep going against a guy he knows is a strong opponent. Very strong and aggressive young fighter, and he's coming out shooting his big weapons off the bat. And this is the danger of always with a veteran fighter, the first round or two. You know, because of Alvarado's background as a high school wrestler, who took up boxing at age 18, Emmanuel? It's it's inevitable that I'm going to have to seek a comparison with the fighter you train, Kermit Cintron, <laughs> whose background is very much the same. I mean, question one would be: as we go along, does he look like he has the kind of ring comfort that Cintron has been able to develop? I think so. Cintron was a really gifted all-around athlete in high school too. His biggest problem was just that old under guy named Antonio Margarito. Zahn lands an uppercut, which is a Good forceful answer for some of the early bombs Alvarado's been landing. That was the second one Bazan's landed. Alvarado took it well. In a war in round one, both guys have thrown jabs, but both guys are winging power shots. A couple of good body blows there by Bazan, and he ducks the swinging right hand over the top. Bazan is so relaxed, and you see he's watching for the right hand of Alvarez, Alvarado all the time. He's ready to roll his right. He sees that Alvarado's biggest punch is his right hand, and he's watching so he can roll it because he got hit with it earlier. Bazan, originally from Mexico City, now lives in El Paso and says that he's committed to staying in El Paso and ultimately pursuing a life here in the United States. He wants to start a business with the money that he can earn from this fight, and if he Get wins, it'll become a better business. And Bazan has encouraged himself to believe that he can fight with Alvarado. He's fight, fighting a very, very explosive, dangerous fight. Bazan was giving him the business, Jim. Yep. The first minute, it was Alvarado who was landing and seemingly gaining confidence himself, but Bazan has retaliated effectively through the remaining two minutes of round one. Now Alvarado gets his left uppercut in. It seems to be the right hand of Alvarado seems to be the most dangerous punch that Bazan has to look out for. Both guys have thrown a wide variety of punches in round one. But don't wait for them. Don't, don't leave your face out there. Come on, one or two uppercuts are coming in cleanly. Working well, working well, and be careful. Don't put your face there. 
You're working it well, though. Go around a couple times over here. Remember we had a rhythm? Remember that jab, bro? Okay, we worked on get that rhythm going, pop that rhythm. He's really relaxed, baby. He's really relaxed, okay? You need to start acting like that, okay? That's one for him, none for you. You understand me, okay? You good? All right, baby. Copy box numbers in an explosive round one. Alvarado 25 out of 56, Bazan 23 out of 59. Both of them landed 13 power shots. Harold Letterman gave the close round to Bazan. Probably for those effective uppercuts and right hands in the middle of the round. Bazan is so relaxed. I mean, his, his body rhythm seems to be just about like his body is. Totally relaxed, loose, and Plays at his punches very well, and primarily watching out for the right hand from Alvarado. Yeah, if it's a bodybuilding contest, Alvarado wins it hands down. But Bazan, like Kelly Pavlik, gives you a demonstration that sometimes the longer, looser muscles produce the quicker response. Alvarado just a little quicker on the draw. Up. In the last 20 seconds or so. But Bazan is fighting a very good fight, very relaxed, placing his punches very well. And for the most part, giving about as much as he's taking. criticism in boxing media of the quality of the matchups on this undercard, but already it seems to have been elevated just a little bit by the highly telegenic performance of the Filipino prospect Bernabe Concepcion at 122 pounds. Now Bazan and Alvarado are fighting a close fight in the second round. I've been impressed by all of the fights I've saw tonight. They all have been very competitive, and I think it's going to remain that way the rest of the night based on the fights that I see that's coming up. Oh, you think Cotto Margarito? You think Cotto Margarito might be competitive, Emmanuel? <laughs> That's an understatement. Yep. It'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see if this fight goes into the late rounds. Whether the tighter. Tenser Alvarado no, no, no. can maintain his stamina against Time. Bazan, who is so much more relaxed. That's a very good point. Okay? Okay. Water. Okay. For the body. Okay. okay. You're just not moving your head enough. Right. Do you hear what the yeah. fuck I'm saying? Yeah. He's gonna catch you with something sneaky. Keep your fucking hands up, shoulder back, back feet on the ground. Come on, you hear what the fuck I'm saying? Uh, yes, yes. Okay? All right. You're back in control. Now I need you stepping a little harder off your back foot with the jab. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Hey, baby, we got it. Take it. <laughs> Round three begins between Mike Alvarado and the Black Trunks, rising prospect in the 140-pound weight class, unbeaten fighter, and longtime veteran Cesar Bazan, who was prominent 10 years ago in the 135 and then the 140-pound weight classes and is serving as an interesting gatekeeper here. They've been banging away at each other in the first two rounds. Emmanuel Stewart, 
And just before the start of this fight, we Get showed Miguel up. Cotto in his dressing room, and I mentioned that he had been in the arena an hour and a half already let him go. Let him go. and spent close to an hour at ringside watching one of his stable mates fight and conversing with a few passers-by from his seat in the front row. I want to point out that since I said that, Antonio Margarito has indeed entered the arena, so both fighters are inside the MGM.